do you take out the the desire element from an unselfish action how do you go about purifying the motive from selfish to unselfish ultimately intending to reach that state of selflessness the reason we we said that is because only selfless actions are liberating <clears throat> any other than selfish uh, any action other than selfless is binding so you want to reach the state of liberation one has to perform selfless action so in that context how do you take out the the desire element from an unselfish action any thoughts since you all were given a question i hope you have, you did ponder over it <clears throat> frankly i didn't have time to ponder so i don't know about you all so i don't have an answer hari ji has done meditation on the question ji yes, hari ji sir ji whether it is unselfish or selfless any action that is done with without a kartrupa bhavana with absolute objectivity that and the action should end in itself instead of letting it go ever and ever so my answer is objectivity is the solution all right take a note sir anything else yes vijay ji pranam guru ji uh to me from a practical point perhaps is that the un- selfless an action to become selfless it has to become a second nature in the sense starting from the smallest or a very uh, not with a great impact small actions to tra- tra- gradually we should progress to larger uh, larger sacrifices is very difficult to start with larger so we can always start with smaller things so that we make it a habit that's the only way i can sort of it's which is involving conditioning yourself gradually without thinking you know to be able to do without thinking mm. but but all of that only happens through a process through a conscious effort totally conscious effort yes and here the conscious effort is injection of these ideas wisdom that's when there's going to be a a paradigm shift in the the nature of action one performs so the the accent is where exactly 
should that shift come about so that the action changes. Therefore, what should I do to change the nature of my action? I should make a conscious attempt with my head rather than thought. I, I don't know whether I'm on the right track or not. Mm. See, uh, since you, you said that, a, an ideal action is, there has to be a, an integration of head and heart. If there is no integration, it becomes a constant tug of war. There's a constant battle within. But if your heart also feels and your intellect also understands, it's a there's a grace when you do something because your whole personality is sold by it. Your whole personality becomes a symbol of it. As it were, you don't have a divided loyalty. You see. I don't have any other interest but this. Then my whole personality is towards it. That's why we always say your head and heart should be in the pursuit of the self, not just the head dragging the heart, come along with me. It's like, you come across some funny videos. And as parents and some of you grandparents, you all have experienced and seen how difficult it is to manage these kids. And some kids are so naughty. You don't, and especially you find them in malls or in airports, you find these kids having a leash around them. You know, So there's a small leash around, hooked to their bag, their backpack. And the, the other end is hooked to the mother's handbag. And the kid is not obeying. So they keep pulling the kid along, you know. At times the kid is so naughty that they're, they're dragging the kid on the on the floor. And the smooth floor, they're just they're pulling the, the kid along with you. So the kid is not cooperating. Such a nuisance. The kid is the mind. The intellect is the adult. How beautiful would it be if the child cooperates with the parents or the mother? And when the child doesn't cooperate, then you know what happens. So exactly in that sense, the head and heart must always go in sync. But point noted, uh, Vijayji. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll jump into it. So how do you take the, the desire element out of the unselfish desire. The only way you can take out the, the desire element or take out the motive from an unselfish action is by constantly purifying the motive. You have no other way but to purify the motive. So in order to purify the motive within, first and foremost, you must become conscious of your motive. When you are performing an action, you must become conscious of what is the motive behind that action. Most of them are not conscious. So, the only way you will get into the motive is by purifying the motive. In order, in order to purify, you must become conscious of the motive. Now your current motive you are entertaining is that which you are unconscious of. You're not conscious of your motive. So the moment you become conscious of the motive, that is your current state. Because unconsciously you're exhibiting something which is innately you, which could be 70% selfish, 30% unselfish, 0% selfless. That is my current state. So unknowingly, I am very egoistic. I am very possessive. I have that doership attitude. I am very attached, so on and so forth. Unknowingly, this is my state. But the moment I become conscious of the motive, I go about 
purifying the motive. Now, if the only way out is to purify the motive, the next question should be, how would I go about purifying the motive? The, the grossest of action, the grossest motive is a selfish. Now, broadly, we're categorizing whenever we use the word desire, desire is categorized under the realm of your mind. Your mind and desire are synonymous. So when you are performing action selfishly, you could say your actions are driven on the impulse of your mind. Uh, I'm, don't generalize it beyond context. It's in a very specific usage, a very In a, in, a, in, a, in a closed concept of saying, because you can always use it in a different context as well. So when your actions are driven by the desire, we say it is driven by the mind. So how do you go about purifying it, making the motive from gross to subtle? And by how do you change the characteristic of the motive from gross to subtle is by identifying a goal or an ideal in life. The only way you will change the characteristics of a motive is by identifying a goal. And the definition of a goal, we have always maintained. The definition of a goal is it is beyond your selfish, self-centered interest. It has to be beyond yourself. That is when it is a goal. If you want to say, I want to make a million dollars for myself, that is not a goal. You may be running a company, you may be running a firm, you may be running an industry, but the end result is I want to make a million dollars for myself. When the I and my is the fruit of your labor, such actions are selfish. But if you are saying, I am trying to expand my industry so that I can support 1,000 employees so that 1,000 families are provided for. And I want to give an opportunity to these people who genuinely deserve, they have talent. I'm striving to expand my business where currently I have only 200 employees, but I want to grow my business where I can comfortably hire 1,000 people, which means 1,000 families are provided for. That is my goal. I'm not seeing anything for myself in it. There might be a certain amount of ego or selfishness there, certainly. But the characteristic has changed from selfish to unselfish because now your goal is your organization. My goal is I want to provide for a thousand families. So what drives you is thousand families, not your personal profit or personal end. So when you, so what is it that conceives the ideal? Gayatrima, are you following the thought process? Yes, Guruji, but the doubt comes that, uh, you know, like... Uh, How did I know that you had a doubt? Now I'm doubting myself. Yes, ma'am. No, uh, what was playing in my mind was, you know, like... Okay, we know that the goal is uh, there, you know, but you keep stretching yourself also. At some point, you know, we feel our own comforts and, you know, we are not able to break that uh, and go above that. So that is... That's the, point of, that's the point of stagnation. See, when you can't go beyond your stretch, you're stagnated. That is where you need a guru to come and pull you up or push you out of your comfort zone. A, a, a higher intellect a superior knowledge, a man who can draw you out of that position, who understands you where you're stuck. You know, we are, everyone gets stuck at different points. In fact, the, the highest point where one gets stuck is in the last stages of meditation. That is where 
the pujari removes the tuft no you can't do anything with it like tota pure broke the idol of the great ramakrishna paramahamsa worshiping goddess kali guru came and helped if the guru did not break the idol the great ramakrishna would have got stuck to that idol so the guru plays that pivotal role in getting rid of your knots you all not tied up so just cut that knot you are liberated then you go to the next level again you will get stuck again he plays a role to pull you out but my question yeah, does that clarify raj gajima yes. but my question is what is it that conceives an ideal that is self uh, highest is the self realization but uh, in the process it will be like step by step we need to go improving it what is it that conceives you're right self realization no 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 and my question is what is it that conceives an ideal because it is the ideal that changes the motive isn't it how do i change my motive if i don't have an ideal my actions are selfish and self centered right now my question thereafter was what is it that conceives an ideal think along gayatri ma yes shushma ma hello uh, guru ji yes ma huh. i feel it's the mumukshatva which we have that we are want when we have that mumukshatva very strong in us and we are wanting to reach our goal hmm now i don't know whether you pun calls even that a mumukshatva also a desire i don't know but i feel if you have the mumukshatva you are trying to do lot of unselfish actions and anything which you keep on doing keep on doing it starts becoming your nature so at one time as you say it is gross someone comes to do me and you think whether i should help or not help or how much money i have or what but it when you become a stage when it anybody's need you see you just just do the action and you don't it becomes your nature to just do that and not think about it if whether i should help or whether i should not help so i think it, it the mumukshatva is there that you're wanting to to reach the goal and if you you are rise gradually rising above your unselfish actions and keep keep on doing unselfish actions gradually gradually i think that will be your way of operating in life when a situation comes you just do it and you don't think i have done it in your my back of your mind you always have this feeling that the lord is enabling me to do it he has only brought the situation in my life and is enabling me giving me the the giving me the way i can help given me the means to help if i didn't have the means i even wanting to help i wouldn't be able to help so that is the way i think i feel about it Guruji, am I anywhere near near what you are asking? I don't know whether I am competent to comment. That is my uh, reason. I am choked for words. No, in fact, uh, you make absolute sense in what you say, and I know you mean every word what you say. Uh, I don't want to spoil the the feeling with which you are and where you are operating from. You know, but. still i have an obligation to clarify the point because you said what is it that conceives the ideal you said mumukshatva in fact mumukshatva is nothing but desire for liberation alone the literal translation of mumukshatva is desire for liberation so that soul 
desire for liberation alone makes one's actions selfless please write that down sushmama the sentence you write it down mumukshatva i shall go slowly mumukshatva is the desire for liberation and that desire alone makes one's actions selfless in nature have Mumuk you been able to uh, capture that now mumukshatva is the desire for liberation and that desire alone makes actions selfless in nature so the question here was what makes actions answer you that this is still a desire you are saying there should not be a desire yeah no no it is it is a desire with reference to the transcendental it is no desire with reference to the terrestrial but guru ji when we are wanting to go above self above uh, unselfish actions to selfless that is why we are asking these questions and trying to get an answer to it indeed indeed but it is still a desire see ma self realization is no desire you get that right the grossest state is full of worldly desires so these are the two extremities we are talking of the journey from full of desires to reach a state of no desire now the state of no desire what could be one step a penultimate stage with reference uh from the state of no desire will be one desire you go further back 10 desires 100 desires 1000 desires 10000 multitude of desires so from multitude you're coming to a state of no desire now we are talking of one desire which stands out in the multitude of all terrestrial desires that one desire which stands out is the desire for liberation and that is the transcendental desire the wanting to liberate which is known as mukshatva i was explaining because you use the word mukshatva now so it is one transcendental desire it is a desire with reference to the self but it is no desire with reference to the world isn't it i have no interest in the world today you are interested in the world today you are interested in the sufferings of the world today you are attached to alleviate the sufferings of the mankind you are still interested in the world that is binding remember that if your thoughts are confined to the world it is still binding ma i ask you i am being chained if i am chained by a, a iron chain or am i chained by a gold chain one six mm thick chain either can either be chained by a six mm thick iron chain or a six mm solid gold chain now i ask you does it make a difference no chain still, is a chain i am still bound it could be a golden chain also i am bound so remember whether you go do good actions or bad actions they are both binding so the whole objective is to raise to that level where you can conceive the goal of realization where you are not bound by either the iron chain or the gold chain i am liberated i have broken all my shackles to get to the self so
You're following, Ma? Yeah. Right. Yes, you. Guruji. Right, perfect. Right, thank you, Ma. So by purifying the motive, we said you will march out from selfish to selfless, unselfish and selfless. How do you purify the motive? We said you must conceive an ideal. And then we asked, what is it that conceives an ideal? It, it is your own intellect endowed with wisdom. Sikhuji rightly said, it's the intellect which is endowed with wisdom that conceives an ideal. So the intellect conceives an ideal. The mind drives you to selfish actions. Now, when the intellect, in fact, in the Gita, there's a word, there's a phrase. Harish, uh, if you're there, or Rajima, please write this. Atma buddhi prasadajam. It's a blessing. Prasadajam, sadam is a blessing. Atma buddhi. It's a blessing born out of the wisdom. Atma buddhi. The wisdom which is born out of the blessings of the wisdom, Atma Buddhi, when the intellect is endowed with that wisdom. So it's a blessing, it's a prasadam. When your intellect is endowed with wisdom, what intellect you possess? An aggressive, bad fellow, a shrewd fellow also has some kind of reasoning, some kind of thinking, but that fellow has no wisdom endowed. He only using the intellect to manipulate things for his own self benefit. That is not endowed with wisdom. Like Duryodhana and company, they also manipulated, used their shrewdness. We're not talking of that. So the mind desires is gross. Intellect ideal is unselfish. And the same intellect should conceive the goal of realization, making it selfless, mumukshatva. So by consciously purifying the motive, by raising the ideal, as Gayatri Ma said, as time may come where I've reached my limit at threshold, I don't think I can do more. I've reached my comfort zone. You've got to break that threshold. The pressure must be so much. The pressure of suffocation must be so much that you break the banks and you go beyond. Like when they build these dams, they're only building it so that it can withhold the pressure of the, 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 the onslaught of the, the water from the rivers. They should contain, but if they are not able to contain, it should it will break the, the barriers. So your suffocation of selfish action should, should break the barriers and let you go beyond that comfort zones. And that is, and when you do that, you will raise your ideals. The goals are higher and higher, and someday you will be inspired by self-realization. Self-realization, when you can see such actions alone are selfless. There is no little self, less. Selfless means I am not there. There is no I and my actions are performed only for liberation. That is how you go about purifying the motive. A simple, straightforward answer. I hope you got the message. Is to become conscious of your motive. And by being conscious, you change the nature of your actions by conceiving an ideal, a goal, and then offering your actions towards them and continuously keep rising the ideal so that you don't stagnate. Ultimately, you are able to conceive the goal of realization where the actions become selfless, desireless, motiveless, from grossly selfish to divinely selfless. Mm.
So you need to know what is your ideal you're working for now. My ideal is I want to help the poor. My ideal is I want to do anadanam. My ideal is I want to build homes for the needy. My ideal is I want to give emotional support. So many people are emotionally deprived. I want, there are many organizations that do that. They, they set up call centers, uh, establishments where they just try to become, they lend the years. Well, nobody's listening to their problem. They lend the years. In fact, I know of the people who do that. So I don't know, Harish, if you have heard this before. They are these organizations whose numbers are known and people who are in extreme distress, even at the verge of committing suicide, is the last ray of hope for them. And all you can do is you can pick up that call and somebody is just there. They don't ask anything from you. They don't ask your name, number, nothing. They just lend your ears to you and you can pour out all what you can. Nothing is recorded and the conversation can end in anonymity. So other person feels comfortable and they say, somehow these people do come back because there's nothing they can trace who called and all. So they come back, come back and say, I at some point spoke to you all and thanks for lending me the ears. It just lightened my heart and I was at the verge of breaking a relationship or snapping a relationship or committing suicide. So there are people who do that. I want to do emotional service to people. I want to educate the uneducated. I want to build schools and institutions. All of this is, what is all of this? Harish, one thing common in all of this. Sorry, Guruji. Um, there's still a desire and motive to this act. There's still a desire, still a motive, still it is confined to the world. It's still confined to the world, isn't it? And every thought in these satsangs resonates what? Sorry, Guruji, I didn't understand this question. Do you have the question? Every thought in this satsang resonates what? So, what is the, the bottom line theme of the study of Vedanta? Nobody answers, especially Rajima. She's quickly typing it out. I could see it basically the play of fingers. Correct, Rajima? No, no, I'll, I'll seek your comment, but I don't want to give anything away to Harish. Yes, Harish? We are striving to do everything without any motive, to do it motivelessness. That's the to self to self uh, to self realize ourselves. Yes, the only thought the shastras keep roaring again and again, again and again until you get sick and tired. Man, what are you talking of? Brahman, Atman, realization, mumukshatva. What is it? But one who is ready for it is like bee and honey. The bee looks for that honey and keeps revisiting those flowers just to get that little drop of honey. In the Dhyana Shloka, she says, Raha Raha, you know. How does that Shloka start, uh, Hariji? Dhyana Shloka, remove it. He talks of the bees that go and seek honey. Dhyana Shlokas. Starting problem. Ramji, you know the verse? So 
So he talks of spiritual seekers like the bees that are drawn to honey that go day in and day out and go and draw the honey. I think it's the third or the fourth verse there. I would like to chant that verse. No beads yet, huh? Ramji, have you got it? Yes, sir. How does it start, please? Can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah. Prapanna Parijataya Totrave Traika Panaye. Yeah. Is it the one? Jnana, Jnana Mudraya Krishna Gitam Rita Duhe Namaha. Not that one. Not that. Is the fourth or the fifth mantra? Fifth, this might be. Fourth is uh, Sarvopanishado Gavo Dugda Gopalandanaha Padho Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta Dugdam Gitam Rtam Sarvopanishado Gavo The fifth is a well known one was there also some demo comes to turn over Madhana. It uh, that 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 verse ends with Raha Raha. Again and again. No, sir, it's not here in my book at least. So, which version of Jnana Shlokas you have, sir? This is uh, by Ramakrishna Mat. So, it is still could be authentic. Yeah. Yes, Hariji. Uh, give me the, the starting of that verse, please. Father Shriya Baju. So verse seven. Does that end with Raha Raha there? Uh, one of the lines there. Is it there? Yeah, the meaning is uh, may the spotless of uh, Mahabha, which is born in the lake of the words of Parashara son, which is rich with the fragrance of import of Gita, which has many narratives as uh, filaments, which is fully blossomed by the story of Hari, which is joyously drunk day after day by the bees of good and pure mm -hmm. men in the world. Correct. That is the word seven. Parascharya. Ah. Parascharya. Yeah. Parascharya. Vacha Saroja Mamalam. Gita Artha Gandor Katam. Nana Kyanaka Kesaram Harikada. Sambodhana Bodhitam. Loke Sajjana Shatpadai Rahara. Please write this down. Huh? Loke Sajjana Shatpadai Rahara. Pepiyamanam Mudha. Bhuyadharata Pankajam Kalimala. Pradhvam Sthina Shreyase. Inna Rajima. I think it's Pradvam Sina Guruji. Pradvam? Sina. Sina. Verse 7 uh, of. Not Pradvam Sina. 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 Pradvam Sina. Shreya Se. Right. So that's the, that's the verse. So 
I don't know why we got into this verse. Why did we get into this verse? You were talking about the bee picking up honey for that going. But flower. why did we talk? But why did we talk of the bee going to the honey? Is the question, Ramji? That you people find out why. At least that way you'll think of the class. Otherwise, after the class finishes, you forgot what is said. So there's a little bit of climax. Okay, right. That, that is the name. Huh? That is the that is the nature of the bee that it keeps on going to the honey. So once we don't have the desire, then we have got only one desire. So we will again and again go only to that. It is the nature. No, no. I mentioning Harish. I said about the quintessence of the shastras is the the self or the Brahman, and like the bee goes and keeps drawing the honey. those who are in tune to the shastras to the very goal which is propagated in the shastras the seekers come and take that honey of the goal of the self the shastras don't talk about dravya yagna tapo yagna yoga yagna which is material service physical service emotional service intellectual service they don't talk of it the shastras don't glorify it the shastras only glorify ushama what do the shastras glorify they do not glorify to help you answer the question they do not glorify dravya tapa yoga these are the various yagnas means services or charities you can perform what is it they glorify only self realization which and uh, desireless uh, unselfish action that's all right now i am just using the language and drawing the fourth out of it out of you the three are yoga yagna jnana yagna pas dravya yagna tapo yagna yoga yagna you heard of this i'm sure you yes. would have in yes. the fourth chapter so if you have heard three you must have heard the fourth also i i had not attended those classes guruji but i have heard about these three that's all oh you only heard of three yeah huh? i mean very, in general Ramji, general very con very conveniently she is answering sir so i need to take an audience with uh, ushama to clarify plenty needs to be clarified huh? the in this context of yagnas which appears in the fourth chapter i think it's the 24th verse of chapter 4 if i'm not wrong in that section he talks of 12 yagnas the four yagnas so the shastras do not glorify they mention but they don't glorify first three are dravya is material wealth tapah is physical service yoga yagna is emotional intellectual service what the shastras glorify is swadhyaya gnana yagna swadhyaya self study the study of the shastras to invoke the wisdom within the shastras only glorify that okay ma yes Kashish, have you been able to capture that, Kashish? All right, we shall revisit it again. What have you got so far, Guruji? I wrote down the the three terms. I just didn't catch the last the last oh. word. That what was the, the self study. What are the What are the three things you have got? I have um, Dravya Yagya. Yeah. D R A V Y A. Dravya Yagna. Mm -hmm. Dravya means material service. Dravya means wealth or something which wealth can buy. You can do another one means which is serving the the needy with uh, grains or whatever. You can buy food. You can buy clothing. You can give shelter. All that can be bought through wealth. that is material in fact material service 
is the lowest of all services in the four categories of service. The lowest is this. Superior to Dravya is Tapaha, Tapo Yajna, T-A-P-O or T-A-P-A-H. Tapaha or Tapo means physical service. Physical service is superior to material service. You can, you can send in a donation with your mobile phone, isn't it now? With your mobile phone with a few buttons, you get before you realize it's gone. Visa, -vis, you're physically going to a, a particular place, finding out what they need, and you realize they need physical help, they need hands. You're organizing an event, they need help. You go there, Shramadhan, they call you know. Ramadan is you toil, you sweat it out, your whole day you're there. That is far superior than just sending a UPI transaction. Yes, clicking a few buttons and sending is far better than that is tapo yajna, physical service. Superior to tapo is yoga. Yoga yajna is emotional and intellectual. I took about, I took reference to uh, you know, just lending an ear, emotional, to, to take some kind of, you know, time to just listen to others, to feel depressed. That is emotional. You want to impart knowledge, to give livelihood, to make them, to giving some skills to them. That's knowledge, party, you know, so that they can be self-sufficient, intellectual work. Now, the last is Swa. Dhyaya, S V A or S W A you can put S W A D H Y A Y A Swa Dhyaya Yajna Swa is self Dhyaya is study. So Swadhyaya means self-study. So the highest service, don't change a word, Kashish, in that. The highest service you can render to humanity is sitting at your home and doing self-study. At what time? At 4 a.m. Brahma Murtam. Are what? kind of self, what kind of service is this? Would you not ask that question? Don't you feel a jerk? You get a jerk, Ashish, don't you? Yes, Guruji. The first three services are all going out into the world and helping people. It's material, physical, emotional, intellectual. But the fourth service is sitting in your own home, is sitting with your desk with the Shastras and doing Swadhyaya. Sit and study the Shastras. And they say this is the highest service you can render to mankind and the Shastras are glorifying it. Now I ask you, can you help us rationalize how does this become the highest service? Guruji, I'm imagining it as the power of a collective mass raising of consciousness where it's if we all if we all perform that self-study and introspect maybe a lot of the like other physical or emotional problems themselves will automatically get resolved and because it's it's like you said the other three are all terrestrial this one would be I forgot the term used. Not terrestrial. Transcendental, yes. So I'm imagining that is what what rationalizes it rationalizes it as being a service that is greater than the other three. Because it probably resolves the other three in some way if all of us individually do this. 
good attempt very good attempt i know you are hearing these terms for the first time but i give 100% marks for the attempt uh, a plus effort thanks kurji great. great but just keep lending your ears yeah uh, yes sir the, the most wisest person in this class will answer lakshmi ma will answer the so that didn't she didn't expect that coming her way uh, i was just reflecting on what she said in it made a lot of sense you know so uh, why i i am also still wondering guruji can we do it parallel i mean while we are studying self studying i know that's the highest thing but as we do we do service and the other yagnas i am not saying it is all exclusive please i am only the shastras are saying this is the highest if you can embark on that it is not they are not suggesting one at the cost of the other no but today people do one at the cost of everything else if mm -hmm. i do material service my whole life i need to do material service i don't think of anything else and i think that is the greatest service you can render mankind if i am doing emotional service i think that is the glorious thing to do and i i don't appreciate other things nor am i able to do other things so everyone is got caught up in a in a, in, a, in a compartment but if you understand that there are all these it just opens you up and you do render every possible service is like somebody uh, uh comes with a material help knocking at your door you can't call that person into the house and make him feel comfortable and start om sahana bhavatu sahana om bunaktu oh he is tired of uh, normal class okay i'll chant upanishad invocation and talk upanishad class that person wants some you know somebody needs to be hospitalized i want some money can you help me he is not ready for spiritual wisdom you can say no i only do that you may be doing that but would you be able to adapt to that situation and see in what way you can and whenever you do that do remember shakespeare and desdemona the famous words of desdemona desdemona is one of the, the fairest of lady characters depicted by all lady characters shakespeare had portrayed in all his plays how many plays how many plays shakespeare has written Seven plays are, huh? and the Shivaji, Nariya particular ninga. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven plays, and all his plays, Desdemona stands out as the fairest of character, and the one of the reasons is this: she says this quote in Othello, and one of the most sacrificial lady she was, and the quote she says, you remember? Do you do you know the quote, Kashish? So you are smiling. I thought you know it. i think you know i maybe know it guruji because one of my students i'm tutoring is studying othello so the last 3 weeks i've been studying othello oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay that's nice so tell me i i don't i don't know if i know the exact quote guruji but is it are you thinking of the end where she knows she's going to die and she says something while kneeling at her bedside is that the scene you're thinking of no i mean you know, there are many many things that do stand out because of such a character she was mm. the one i'm referring to is the quote is she found it a wise in her goodness write down my dear she found it a wise in her goodness not to do more than requested for she found it a wise v i c e a wise in her goodness not to do more than requested for the best way to understand this is as i'm going with the example i just took somebody knocks at your door for some help for wanting to give medical attention to their near and dear and that person asks i want x amount of money she promptly should have done that without a doubt is this person trying to cheat me no such thought should have promptly done that 
and after the person had gone she would have introspected and said cha i wish i could have done little more maybe it could have been little help to that person so the thought in her is she saw it a wise in her goodness that she did not do more than what she was requested for i want 1000 Aussie dollars. Immediately, she gave away Aussie thousand Aussie dollars. I'm talking Aussie dollars because I'm talking to Kashish. Huh? But after that, I should have given a couple of hundred more. You know, it would have been helpful. Maybe they, she would need some post treatment or some medication has to be bought. Hospitalization is expensive. I know that. Maybe I have given a couple of hundred more. introspecting right after the person left these were her thoughts and this is how gayatri ma you break the shackles of comfort zone oh i have done what was asked this is that's all i can do tap the thought is wrong if you want to grow you got to break that limitations in sydney carton in the in the play tale of two cities he gave himself away the greatest giving is you give yourself away So one is Othello, Desdemona. The second is Tale of Two Cities, Sidney Carton, and the last reference of giving. The many references, one such other reference you can fall back in is in Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud. He says so. Cloud is personified as the epitomization of giving because when the cloud gives rain, in the process of giving rain, it gives prosperity and life. But in the process of giving rain, it gives itself away. It doesn't exist after the giving. So the height of giving is where you give yourself away. And if you want to really embrace giving, lastly read Khalil Gibran on giving. Those who of you are inspired to give, learn the noteworthy points of what qualifies true giving. So Ramji, can you please summarize the four references I took so just now? Um, I got only three, I think, uh, Guruji. One is Destimona. Yes. So she, uh, yeah, I think I got the third one. Yeah. So. she found a wise in her goodness not to do more than requested for that is uh, from othello and the two tales um tale of twin cities ah sorry tale of tale of twin cities two cities tale of two cities okay yeah because residing in twin cities twin cities comes to our minds yeah, vijay yeah. ji so please forgive vijay ji for that huh? that is by Yeah, I didn't catch that. Um, That's that play is written by Charles Dickens. For oh, Charles Dickens, okay. Charles Dickens, and the the hero of the play is Sidney Carton. Oh, and Sidney okay. Carton, he gives up his life for his friend. Get himself, gets himself guillotined. Okay. And third is daffodils, where we talk of the cloud which gives itself away uh, for the good of the people. then khalil gibran is the last one but uh, i don't know what is the quote you know the khalil gibran has written on many topics yeah. and you should read on khalil gibran's opinion on giving okay a rich man went to him and asked please give us your thoughts on giving and he spoke and my okay. joe what he spoke was huh, super stuff he captures all the elements of giving in one go outstanding wisdom outstanding okay right sir thank you thank you so kashish you got that swadhyaya gnana yagna but we have not i got the answer why is 
you can ask Setu Ji, why is self-study far superior to all other services? Because it is uh, a transcendental thing. Rest are all uh, terrestrial. You have a point, but still my question stands. Because why, if I, not... sir, if I tell you, sir, where are you rushing? Sit in the house, open the shastras and sit and study. No, no, sir, I'm running the foundation, as you know, I need some help. I know somebody needs service and I know you all the time. You are all the time of help to everybody. But if I say, sir, no, which you're doing now, which is you're doing Swadhyaya, get up in the morning and do that. So if I give emphasis on that and say, I'm not saying not do other things, but I'm saying in discussion, this is far superior to everything else. Uh, Why? The uh, reason is we want to go back to our source. That is our true nature. Just that the river goes back to ocean. We want to go back to our home. That is the liberation. That is the goal. And okay, uh, so what? Are you not being very selfish? You are sitting in your own comforts and just sitting and studying, not mindful of all what's happening outside. What sort of a service are you doing to humanity? Oh, no, the, uh, the answer for Lakshmi, madam, says uh, we, we uh, you you said we can uh, need not do exclusive, but uh, my feeling is with the time as you progress, it will all drop out itself. Even our uh, unselfish acts and all that will drop out as we evolve, as we go closer to our goal. You, you unknowingly it will drop out. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point you make. I agree there. But why are the Shastras saying self-study is the highest form of service? So service is giving, but uh, I'm sitting and studying. Uh, what am I giving? No, no. Highest uh, service is, see, highest goal, uh, ideal is to self-realization. Any guru who uh, helps you in that path uh, is the highest uh, service because that is the goal of every person, human being, uh, every living. Uh, so yes, don't put the responsibility on the guru to sit and study. You are, guru is telling you, sit and study. Yeah. That is the highest service you can render to humanity. Not physical service, not material service, not even emotional, intellectual. Yeah. In fact, the highest service you can render is spiritual service to mankind. In order to give the self, sir, in order in, in terms of degree, which is more superior, sir, material, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, which is the self, which is superior of the most? Spiritual. Spiritual service. Now, in order to give material wealth, what is understood? I must have material wealth. In order to do physical service, I must have the physical strength and stamina. In order to emotional service, I must be able to lend my ears and feel for other sufferings. In order to intellectual service, I must have the ability to give that skill. In order to give Brahma Vidya, I, I must be endowed with the wisdom of Brahman, isn't it? I can only give what I have. If I want to give Brahma Vidya, I must devote and my life must be devoured by the pursuit of Brahman. And in order to attain that state, I must do Swadhyaya. So if I can, I can only give Brahman or the self to you to the extent I have invoked the self in me. So I am doing self-study so that I realize the self within and the moment I realize it within, I give it out. And if I give it out, what's the longevity of the self or the Brahman? Generations and generations are benefited by your wisdom of realization. There was one Brahmana there's one Ramatirtha, there's one Vivekananda, there's one Shankaracharya. What these great men have done, they have just realized it. Decades and decades and generations and generations are still inspired by that act. How long will your material service serve? How long your physical service go? How far your emotional service and intellectual service will go? It does reach, but how far? How far will, emo, will spiritual service go? It doesn't die with you. It doesn't die in any generation. It is Sanadana Dharma. That service is eternal. So if you imagine you know, all of us embark on Swadhyaya, which is what you're being told. For God's sake, just get up and study those one, one and a half, two hours. Just study for your own transformation. 
you may not attain moksha never mind but the fact that you are unfolding the self the luster of the self will start radiating wherever you go whatever you do you are speaking out the self speaks the self glows that sense kashish you are doing self study because you want to impart the self to others and it's a lifetime commitment you thereafter cannot do anything else but this you will obviously adapt to different situations and demands but your primary objective is swadhyaya self study i want to purify myself self development self purification ultimately attain self realization that is the forefront of the purpose of my life did you have a question from this selfish to unselfish to selfless is a sequence one one has to go through unselfish to become to go to self selfless isn't it absolutely from selfish you can't jump to self Correct. because with this knowledge if one thinks i don't want to do any seva or anything beyond service self uh, service above self but i want to just uh, uh, sit and pray or that will be only intellectual knowledge please i am so glad you said that if you are not able to get down onto your knees if you are not able to sweat it out if you are not able to do any kind of other services the knowledge you have is of no use you are rotting within you are intellectually words fly high but spiritually are rotting the only way to reach that selfless state is by being able to serve but it must be done concurrently along with the brahma vidya when the brahma vidya is taken out of the equation then it limits you by introducing this swadhyaya in your sadhana thereafter whatever you do you do for self realization so the thought of self realization you go down into the slums to serve the poor you are doing it for moksha but you will still do because you find an obligation you feel you are in a position to serve you do that but only only for realization so selfish you can't step out of selfish and walk into selflessness you will have to step out of selfish into unselfish linger in the corridors of unselfishness until you enter the abode of selflessness you linger in the outward homes outward doors of unselfishness until you enter the abode of selflessness it's a long journey but we only laying out the journey ahead of you so that the path you know this is all we got to hmm. and ashama just quietly she posted a question to me um, people who go to gurudwara and and render selfless service which is incognito in nature would call it action without desires it's not a question of where you are and what you do the question is for what you are doing as i said you can go out to the slums and you can serve the people there but if you are doing it for self realization it is selfless it's not what you do are you doing it for liberation you know so the thought of the self consumes you there is no hidden motive at all you know but if you carefully examine your own actions there's always a motive so because we have not able to attune to the self goal isn't it now follow ma yes i would uh, i would leave it at that and uh, i we all are extremely delighted feel blessed uh that his holiness uh jagat guru shankara acharya of kanchi kamakoti peetham shri vijayendra saraswati swami gal has agreed for our kind invitation to visit the the new premises of the wisdom foundation the wisdom institute as you all are aware he has accepted our invitation and he is coming this evening at 6 pm 
and we have got the confirmation that he will minimum spend an hour at the premise, which is more than what we have bargained for, to be frank. And there's likely that he will continue to spend a little more time if all goes as planned. And we are extremely blessed for the whole opportunity provided to receive him. So those of you who are not in a position because of being in your own different geographical location, we are putting in every effort to capture the every moment of his presence, the moment he sets his foot in. So I believe the the information of the program has already reached you all. We all request you all to, to log in 15 minutes in prior, which is at 5.45 Indian Standard Time, 6 p.m. today, it would go live stream. If there is a, a little delay, please bear with us. Uh, but we are putting every effort to capture the whole event from receiving him to uh, the little event we are putting up uh, of him addressing. Though I am being told that he would address in a language which is very comfortable to him, which is either the mother tongue Telugu or in Tamil. But I believe he would speak in Telugu. We are sending in a request to see if he can in some way accommodate the, the global audience who can't follow the language, but to a, a Paramacharya, we can just request. We can, but it's just the whole aura of the whole location and we, we are capturing it. It would be broadcasted later, but try to be there uh, so that uh, you all are able to feel the, the event, okay? So we're very, very delighted and excited for this happening. Those of you who can come, please do come. Those of you take that little effort and time out to come. And if you are not in a position in someone who can come, please do share this. It's the, even though it's a close invitation, but we would want to create opportunity to those who really want to come and seek the blessings, all right? Uh, please log in and please be there. All right. Thank you. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Om.